Hey, the Razorbacks actually got a really high quality win in basketball at home against Texas A&M, and that's three in a row at home. And oh my goodness, could they win all the games at home? And could they actually go to the NCAA tournament? We're going to try to talk about it. You are locked on Razorbacks, your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And welcome into the Locked On Razorbacks podcast. I am your host, John Neighbors. I am also the host of Out of Bounds. You can catch every weekday afternoon from 1 to 4 on 103.7 The Buzz and 1037thebuzz.com. I want to remind everybody that today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. This, and of course, the official sports book of Locked On. Make sure you make every moment more. Visit fanduel.com slash locked on to get started. Hope everybody's having a wonderful, wonderful Thursday, Wednesday. I <laughs> got my days already mixed up. Snowed in iced in, whatever you may be here in the state of Arkansas. Hopefully you're staying safe and staying warm and finding ways to do so. But at least we have something great to talk about today. Arkansas basketball taking care of business against Texas A&M by a final score of 81-70 to at Bud Walton Arena. Uh, This is now the third straight SEC home victory that Arkansas has, SEC victory in general. And it's kind of nice to get back on the winning ways, especially knowing that you're going to have more opportunities to build uh, you got South Carolina on the road this weekend, which should be a win. South Carolina is a really bad basketball team. Mississippi State beat them by nearly 20 points on the road earlier uh, this week. So this should be one that you take care of business against. But looking at just specifically the Arkansas game against AM, and Arkansas is really starting to put some good things together. Not to say they're perfect, but they're overcoming a lot of the obstacles that they have been struggling with, especially in the early part of the SEC slate and finding ways to win games, even against Baylor on the road, which you, I think everybody wanted to win, and Arkansas had their opportunities to win, but considering how good of a team Baylor has been this year and considering you know going on the road and how tough it is to win in college basketball, Arkansas still played pretty well in that game. And in this one against a and Arkansas offensively did a really nice job. a and is not a team that gives up a whole lot of points. In fact, if you look at their averages, something we talked about yesterday – a and has only given up around 66 points per game, and Arkansas scored 81. So you're talking about 15 more points for Arkansas than what a and normally gives up. And sometimes when those types of numbers happen, you can equate it to one or two things. It's either that a team got hot from three or a team made a lot of free throws. Those are usually the things when you go up against a really good defensive team in college basketball that gets chalked up to where that one particular game ends up being high scoring. And if you need an example, look at that Vanderbilt game that Arkansas had earlier this year, right? Vanderbilt wasn't exactly, uh, you know, a team that shot great from the three. Arkansas was a really great defensive team, but they gave up 90 points to Vanderbilt. Why? Because they hit threes like crazy. Uh, We've seen it happen with free throws and a lot of free throws get hit by opposing teams. But in this particular case, going up against A&M, that didn't happen. Arkansas did hit six of 18 threes. Didn't go crazy, but a nice percentage, one above their average, so that's pretty good. And from the free throw line, Arkansas shot a lot of free throws, but still didn't make a whole lot of them. 19 of it, 28, that's a 67% from the free throw line. That's not great. So what did it come down to? Well, it came down to the fact that Arkansas was able to shoot 50% from the field. Did a really good job of shot selection and being able to get it to the hot hands and guys being able to make plays when they had the ball in their hands. And in this particular game, we'll talk about the Mitchell twins here in a second, because I want to save an entire segment for them. But they had really good games in this one, and they played really good defense there too. But offensively, you got to look at Devo and Ricky Council, guys that have no problem firing up shots and being really confident about it. Devo still continues to impress me where he goes seven of 13, four of eight from three point land. He went four of eight. He had four threes in this game. I don't know what's happened with his three point shot. And I don't really care what's happened to his three point shot. As long as he keeps bringing in these threes and having these big time plays, then I think everybody's going to say, Hey, Devo, do whatever you need to do. Keep doing this, man. Let, let's, let's let it ride. Let's let it run. Cause I, I suddenly become to the point to where I want him shooting threes. I want him shooting more of them because right now he is on a tear and doing as good of a job as you could ask. So another good game out of him. And uh, Ricky Council, of course, has uh, he goes one of seven from three, does not have a good three-point night, but makes his free throws go six of eight. 
He goes six to 16 from the field had without a doubt the great highlight dunk that we have been missing out on. In fact, I have a little clip of this. Like you got to check this out from Hawks plus because then it goes and shows a must given the award afterwards. But this dunk was absolutely disgusting by Ricky council. The Reese's drive to the cup with the reverse dunk. Ricky, I mean, what? I mean, geez, that, that's the type of athleticism we've seen from him earlier this year, and it was good to see it get highlighted there once again. So, just a uh, just an absolutely awesome dunk and highlight to a great game, and that was towards the end of the second half there too. So that's back to back really great offensive games. Ricky Council's poured in. Anthony Black has 11 points as well, seven assists, five rebounds for him. Goes seven of nine from the free throw stripe. Doesn't shoot a whole lot, but you know, that's the thing is he's not that type of player. He's not a guy who's going to shoot a lot of baskets. It does go to a four, but gets to the free throw line, gets the assist, and it all works out there too. Uh, J Jordan uh, Jordan Walsh coming off the bench, 12 points for him, four of eight from the field. Seven rebounds. He has 12 points, seven rebounds in this game, which, again, is just something you love to see if you're a Razorback fan and getting him back into the mix there, too. Also has an assist and a steal. So really poured it in there and had a, had a really good game from Walsh coming off the bench. Only played 27 minutes in this game, too. So to see the effectiveness that he brings in and the type of game that he brings in, too, he's starting to hit his stride. So right now you're looking at a team that's getting more confident, that's going up against teams that uh, may match up a little bit better and at least understanding each other's roles. But there are some things, though, that are problematic. The turnovers, I think, is the number one thing because Anthony Black, Ricky Council, and Devo Davis all had great offensive games, but each one of them turned the ball over four times. Arkansas had 17 turnovers in this game, 12 of them by three players. And by the three players that are your guards, the guys that are going to be handling the ball the most, I understand turnovers will happen more in those regards, but... That, that's not the thing that can happen. You're not going to be able to beat a whole lot of teams, especially on the road, when you turn the ball over 17 times in a game. This has been Arkansas's biggest issue well, alongside fouling. Like Those are the two biggest things, fouling and turnovers. And I don't know if there's some magic recipe or formula to fix that, but in a game where you don't foul as much in this game, which I thought the game, honestly, officiated was pretty good for the most part, but a few couple, there was like a stretch of a couple of bad calls that I didn't like, but uh, overall it was pretty good. But when that doesn't happen, when it's not the foul calls that are killing you, and you're just giving the ball to him 17 times, that's that's not going to be good for anybody. Now, luckily, out of those 17 times, A and M only scored 17, uh, 16 points off of those turnovers, which is still a lot, but could have been a lot worse than what it was. And also in this game, 24 offensive rebounds for A and M. That's absurd. So uh, they were getting a lot of second chances, but they didn't get a lot of second chance points because they only got 19. Where Arkansas got 13 offensive rebounds and scored 15 points. So that didn't hurt you as much. But still, turnovers have to be addressed, and it has to get better than what we've been seeing. I don't know what's that going to take. I don't know what's it, what's it going to look like. But the fact that you're able to overcome that and play really good defense in this game like Arkansas did, a few of the best players for A&M were pretty much held in check for the most part. Uh, you know, they didn't really have any. In fact, that AM had zero bench points in this game. Like all their points were scored by their five starters. So you you did a good job with that. A couple guys, uh, uh, one guy fouled out. A few guys got in foul trouble. Uh, they were terrible from free throw. Like, they, and that's what a stat that just blew my mind that AM is one of the best teams getting to the free throw line in the SEC. Well, that's all well and good, but uh, they don't make them because they got there 24 times, only made 14. So that was that was pretty bad. Not a great three point shooting team. He, he, the point is, is I think Arkansas matches up really well against AM. So next time they go and play Texas AM, especially on the road, Arkansas might might be able to get them there too. So I like the matchup of it. Arkansas never trailed in this game. Uh, they took care of business, but shore up those turnovers, settle down on the fouls. Those are the things that you can possibly do and uh and make it better. And I, I even mentioned Devo Davis. I had some fun with this too, because I was like, Devo Davis, I, I love the guy sometimes, but sometimes he just drives me up a wall where it's like, he will he will go out there and he'll strike out three times in a row, but then he'll hit a grand slam in his fourth at bat. It's like, jeez, like I just let me love you or hate you for an extended period of time, but this up and down stuff, it's just the way he is, I guess. 
But, uh, you know, you'll take it. You'll take it. You'll mix the good with the bad as long as it results in wins. And that's what Arkansas was able to do. And we'll talk about specifically the Mitchell twins because I think they definitely deserve uh, their own shout out and their own segue too here in just a second. But folks, I need to tell you about FanDuel, the official sports betting partner for the Locked On Podcast Network. And if you're new to FanDuel, you need to try it out because it's even better for you. They have so many great features that make betting on sports fun and easy. Download FanDuel now and you can bet the Super Bowl, 57 that is, with a no sweat first bet. You'll get up to $3,000 back in bonus bets if it's your first bet that doesn't win. FanDuel lets you bet on everything from the money line to point spreads to who will score a touchdown. So check it out. I promise you, you won't be disappointed. It's something to where no matter if it's Super Bowl or if it's college basketball or any sport, FanDuel has you covered with all the sports, especially going on right now. And the different parlays and prop bets, to me, that's the most fun part about it, too. And one of the best things about the FanDuel Sports app is it's safe, secure and super easy to use and you get paid with your winnings instantly. Not all apps do that. FanDuel does that for you. So join FanDuel today at FanDuel.com slash locked on to claim your no sweat first bet on Super Bowl 57. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on. Make every moment more with FanDuel, the official sportsbook partner of the NFL. You are locked on Razorbacks, your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, so continuing on with the Locked On Razorbacks podcast, I got to give a shout out specifically to the Mitchell twins, especially in this particular game, Makai and Mikel Mitchell. I don't think like we have talked about it enough, and I'm going to be you know one that takes a lot of blame for that. I So many times we get wrapped up in players that aren't playing like Brazil and Smith. Sometimes we get wrapped up in just the players that seem to score the most, like Anthony Black, Ricky Council, Devo Davis, maybe Jordan Walsh being a fight. Like we get so wrapped up with those guys, and there's good reasons to be. But Makai and Mikel Mitchell deserve so much credit for the way that they played this year and their roles on this team and just being consistent. Like there's not a time that I look back upon where I look at either of the Mitchell twins and say, that was a bad game by them. They're the ones that had our, one of the main reasons Arkansas lost these games. You know, whatever it may be. It's it's never been that case. It's different. It's very much different. And in this game against AM, both of them played phenomenal, but especially Mikel Mitchell. His stat line is absurd. He had almost a double double, but not in the double double ways, or even a triple double, if you if you will. And he did it in a way that would have been pretty unorthodox if he would have found a way. So Mikel Mitchell finishes with nine points, goes four of eight from the field, one of three from the free throw line. He has 13 rebounds, seven. Block shots and a steal, zero turnovers. Seven block shots. All right. Incredible game. And that's only in, well, only, but 32 minutes of play did a really good job. Makai Mitchell, who's gotten the start many times this year, he also had six points in this game. He goes three or five from the field, has five rebounds and three block shots and a steal with no turnovers. Like that's the type of role that these guys play and they are so good at it. They're efficient. They don't, they don't want the ball all the time. Like, they're not ones that are calling for it. They wait for their opportunity. They play really good defense down low, and they get a ton of rebounds. And this game was just so incredible for them, uh, both to, to be showcased that ability, especially Mikel Mitchell, where Mikai starts a lot. He gets a lot more minutes. But seeing this type of game from Mikel uh, gives you a lot, of, a lot of hope that if Arkansas is able to go up against some big-time teams with a lot of size, that you'll be able to counter that. That's exactly why Eric Musselman did what he did when he was recruiting guys out of the transfer portal. Because if you remember correctly, you were, you had the Mitchell twins coming in, which were both 6'10 guys. You had Trevin Brazil, which is 6'9", 6'10 guy. And then you had uh, Jalen Graham, which was a 6'9", 6'10 guy. So you had the size that's there for sure. And even Kamani Johnson plays 6'8", 6'9". So big dudes. And unfortunately, with Trevin Brazil going out, that kind of went away with your insane athlete and his ability to stretch the floor and hit threes. But – these guys with the Mitchell twins have still done a really good job of going inside, posting up, being able to hold defense uh, offenses to uh, to a kind of a, adjusting their game plan to where they can't go inside as easily as that maybe they would have done against Arkansas this past year. And I just think they deserve a lot of credit for that. I like what they're bringing. They're getting better. And that's another thing, too, when we talk about uh, the Razorback basketball team and individuals. Like, think about this. Is there a player that is 
just as like like worse right now than what they were earlier in the year, or maybe just as good. Maybe so. I think there's an argument for it. But if you look at the majority of the team right now, the Mitchell twins for sure are better than what they were at the in, earlier in the year. Jordan Walsh is for sure better than what he was. Devo Davis is for sure better than what he was. I think Anthony Black might be the one that's probably the same, which is not a bad thing because he's he's really good. But I think that he's probably the one that has remained the same uh, of all the players there. You, Ricky Council. It's really hard to say because the consistency sometimes is there, sometimes it's not. But I think he's about the same for sure. I think he's the same player. Uh, I think his defense was slacking in the beginning, but it's gotten a little bit better there too. I think Jalen Graham, even a guy that doesn't play a whole lot here and there, but I think he's gotten better. So overall, you've had a lot of individuals get better as the season has gone on. And I think that the Mitchell twins are one of the greatest examples of that, that with coaching and everything put into place, uh, you can really put together a really good job with the, with these guys. So kudos to them. And that's going to lead us right into our next segment when we talk about the rest of the year and uh, some of the things that we could be looking at here in just a second. But first, I got to tell you about Built Bar. If you're looking for a delicious treat, but don't want all those fat and all those calories, try Built Bar. I promise you, you won't be disappointed. It's still the new year. You still have time. It's amazing that we're already here to February. Craziness. But I'm sure all of you are still going through your New Year's resolutions to eat healthier and to go to the gym and get exercise and all that stuff too. Well, let Built Bar help you out with that. They're covered in 100% real chocolate, so they taste amazing, but they don't have high calories, 130 calories, only four grams of sugar, but 17 grams of protein in the little bar. It, it's incredible. Like it, It's something that makes it almost cheating in a way, but they are that good. And not only can you go to built.com and check out all the different flavors and get your orders, but you can also go to your nearest Walmart and Sam's Club, which we know we love here in Arkansas, and check out the four box or the 13 bar box at either of those locations. So I promise you, you won't be disappointed. Head over to built.com, head to your local Walmart or your local Sam's Club, check out Built Bar. I promise you, you won't be disappointed. You are locked on Razorbacks. Your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, so final segment here on the Locked On Razorbacks podcast. I'm going to look at for Razorback basketball. I won't even call it a prediction necessarily, but I will call it uh, an intriguing way of looking at the rest of the season for the Razorbacks. Because right now, as it stands, you are 15 and 7 overall. You are four and five in conference play. I think Joe Lenardi had you at a 9-10 seed as of yesterday before the AM game. I don't know if that will necessarily change as much, but you're still in the NCAA tournament as of right now. You're flirting with it, but you're in. You're not the last four in. You're not the first four out or anything. You're in. So you are now in charge of building that up. Right now, Arkansas stands also where they're ninth in the SEC at four and five. We'll have some teams play tonight, but you're sitting at ninth. And uh, you're trying to build it back to where you have some opportunities where, for instance, at South Carolina, at Kentucky, those are your next two, next two games. You should beat South Carolina, no problem. And at Kentucky, I'm not saying it'll be a win for sure, but Kentucky's not that great of a basketball team this year. That's a winnable game. They struggled with Ole Miss last night, and Ole Miss is terrible. So it'll be tough. I'm, I'm not guaranteeing a win, but it's one you can win. Absolutely. Then you get Mississippi State at home, which you'll win. You should win. And then at AM, as I said, they match up really well. That could be a win. Florida at home will be a win, hopefully. Georgia at home will be a win, hopefully. And then that final three game stretch is where it's really going to come down to where you go to t Alabama, to Tennessee, and play Kentucky at home. I think you can beat Kentucky at home at Bama and Tennessee. I'm not, I'm not holding my breath. Both those teams are really good. If you could split those, that would be incredible. But you're really in a good position now to go the rest of the way. But here's the kicker. Here's the kicker. Yes, you're in position to do that. But Nick Smith's coming back. I don't care what anybody says. He's coming back. He even tweeted about it yesterday, which he was getting after fans that were uh, coming at him and, and saying, oh, he's not going to play, yada, yada, yada. Uh, no, the dude's going to play. In fact, he was tweeting at a Hog fan. He says, "You, LOL, you think I came back to school not to play? Y'all must not know my character. Have a blessed day, bro. Y'all keep that same energy. First off, Razorback fans, you got to chill and be, being dumb. I'm not saying it's all of you, but... Stop being those things. But he's coming back. And when he comes back, this team is immediately going to be better. Better. Much, much better. So let's just say for funsies, he's out for South Carolina. He's out for Kentucky. His return game is Mississippi State at home. That's February 11th. He comes back. 
the rest of the time, if he's 100% and knowing how good he is at offensively, don't give me this chemistry stuff. No, don't, don't worry about that. That's not a problem. Eric Musselman is a master when it comes to roster management, and these guys want him to play and Nick Smith to be in the game. It's only going to get better. Who's to say that they don't really turn it up another notch and finish out the rest of the season with only one, maybe two losses? I think it's absolutely possible when Nick Smith comes back. He's that good. He's that type of player that can make a massive, massive difference. So be on the lookout for that. I think when he comes back, we're going to see a whole new team, a whole new energy, and it's going to be mind-blowing to think about how good this team truly is going to be once he comes back. I can't wait. I cannot wait. I can't wait for him to shut up all of his haters. I can't wait for everybody to be like, holy crap, this team is good. And the more you build up, the more wins you get, the more run you have. Arkansas is going to be a dangerous team when it comes to March Madness, but they got to get there. They got to make sure all those things fall into place, but I truly believe that they actually will. Appreciate everybody listening in to Locked on Razor Max podcast today. Be sure to like and subscribe to the podcast on iTunes or on Google Play. You can also get after me on Twitter at Buzz John Neighbors for any questions, comments, concerns that you may have. We'll keep it going from there. Same podcast time, same podcast channel tomorrow afternoon. Have a great day, everybody. We'll see you then.